Hello and welcome back to video 2 module 1 standards of measurement. My name is Brock Grant and today we're going to be going through some example calculations to show you how to answer questions that could very well appear on your exam. Now some prerequisites for this video, uh, I would highly recommend that you watch the first video in this series or if you're uh, make sure that you've read through the lecture notes or attended the personal tutorials so that you're comfortable and you are aware of uh, the rules and laws that we've discussed uh, in the previous video and you have an understanding as to why we need to use them. So for this video we're going to be covering chapter 2 in your textbook, page 39. So this is questions 8, 12, 26, 68 and 85. So we're going to start on question 8, page 39 in your textbook. So the question says, state the number of significant figures in each of the following numbers. So the first one, 0 0.081. So something that we need to remember here is the law with our zeros. So remember, a zero is not significant when it is before the first non-zero unit. So that is these two here. So these two are not significant. And remembering our rule two in that as a exact numbers are always significant. So remembering also that our exact numbers are always significant. So this means that the total number of significant finger, uh, figures in 0 0.081 is two. Okay, let us move on to D. 4.090 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So, a 0 is significant when it is in between two non-zero numbers. So, for this 0 here, that means that one is significant. And if it's at the end of a number after the decimal point. So, that means that this 0 is also significant. Now, because we have two exact numbers here, uh, sorry, um, uh, non-zero digits, that means these two are significant. Now, do not fall into the trap of looking at this. This is a no-no. Because remember, a zero is not significant when it is determining the place of a decimal point. So what that means is, is that this one here, because that's the 10 to the negative three, only tells you the movement of the decimal point, which means that it is non-significant, which means the total number of significant figures, one, two, three, four. We have four sig figs or significant figures. Okay, let's move on now to question 12, page 39 in your book. So write each of the following numbers in exponential notation. Now, don't worry about exponential notation. That means the exact same thing as scientific notation. There's no difference between the two. So let's look here. Uh, part A, so 0 0.0456. So remember the formula that we're after is A times 10 to the power of N. So A must be a number between one and nine. So let's look here. So 0 0.0456 is not a number between one and nine. So if we move the decimal point over one, that gives us 0 0.4. So that's still not a number between one and nine. So we move it over once more. 4.5, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. So we have 4.56, times 10, because remember, we are moving the decimal point, so we must put times 10, to the power of, we moved uh, the decimal point twice, therefore it's to the power of two. Now, remember, if we move the decimal point to the left, it's positive. If we move it to the right, it's negative. So that means because we moved it to the right, it is 4.56 times 10 to the negative two. Now let's look at part D. So we've got 12 million. So it is the exact same, exact same process. So we've got our decimal point here. Our value is currently at 12 million. So we move our decimal point. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. So that will give us 1.2. Now we move the decimal point, so it's times 10 to the power of, now we moved it seven times, seven. Now because we moved it to the left, it is positive seven. Okay, let's move on now. So now we're going to get in, uh, more into the tricky ones. So this one is question 68, page 41 in your textbook. So pure water at four degrees Celsius has a density of one gram per mil. How many pounds does a 2.5 gallon of water weigh? Okay, so a couple of things here. We're given some key pieces of information. So the first thing is we are given the density of water at one gram per mil. So density of water, sorry. So density of water is uh, one gram per mil. How many pounds? So the question wants to know how many pounds is in 2.5 gallons of water. So uh, we've also been given some conversions, some, some units here. And we can use those to, to convert it. So remember our formula is given, sorry, times desired over given. So the first thing we want to do is we want to convert our units here because we're given gallons and pounds and all sorts of stuff and we're not comfortable with that. We've, we've never really used those units before. So what our first step wants to be is to convert it into units that we are more familiar with. So let's convert gallons to quarts and then we'll convert quarts to milliliters because we know mills, we're comfortable with mills. So we have 2.5 gallons of water times, now, our desired unit, what do we want it in? We want it in quarts. So we know that there is one, uh, sorry, there are four quarts. per one gallon. So what we do here is we can pretend that this line here is being extended. So 2.5 times four, because we can see our multiplication here, divided by one. And what will happen here is our units, the units gal, will cancel. So 2.5 times four is 10. Our gal, um, gallons cancel out and that leaves us with quarts. So we have 10 quarts. So now that we've done this step, this step is fine. We're now going to convert our quarts to milliliters. So again, it's the exact same process. So given we have 10 quarts, and we want to convert that into milliliters times. Our desired value is mil, so we know that there are 946 milliliters. Our given value is one quart, because there's 946 mils in one quart. So same deal here, so 10, times 946, so that will give us 9,460. Our quarts here, because what we have on the top and the bottom can cancel out, so our quarts will cancel. And 9,460 divided by one is 9,460 milliliters. Okay. So what we do now is we need to make sure that we're staying on track. Remind ourselves, what is the aim of our question? What are we trying to find? Now, the question is asking for how many pounds. That's what we want. 
So we have it in mils. So it, it seems as though, like, well, hang on, why, why did we convert it to mils? Why, what's the point? Here's what led me to that decision. Pure water has a density of one gram per mil. So remember that density is equal to mass over volume. And remembering from the previous video, you should have memorized that one mil of water is one gram. So because of the density of water being one, we know that the 900, uh, sorry, 9,460 milliliters of water will equal 9,460 grams. Now, just a quick side note, because again, this is a common trap that students fall in. The uh, density of water is one. It is one of the few, if not only, substances that has a density of one. Okay, please do not assume that everything, every liquid has a density of one, because it doesn't. And that's where a lot of people come unstuck. So, we have 9,460 grams. Now we're in units that we can work with because we know that one pound is equal to 453 grams. So what do we do? You guessed it. We convert grams to pounds. So what units are we given? We are given grams. So 9,460 grams times so I'll just section this off here times the desired. So what do we want it in? We want it in pounds. So times one pound over the given. So in one pound, there is 453.6 grams. So we go 453.6 grams. Now, this is where it changes a little bit from, uh, from the previous ones that we've done. So 9,460 times one is 9,460. However, it is divided by 453.6. So 9,460 divided by 453.6 is equal to 20.8. Now we look at our units now because we've got grams on the top and we've got grams on the bottom. So these two cancel and that gives us 20.8 pounds. Okay, let's move on now to question 85. Now, a lot of people will tend to panic when they see a question like this. They'll basically open up their exam paper and go, whoa, we have a lot of information here. What, what am I supposed to do? And that's okay. I'll, I'll break it down for you and I'll show you how to uh, ext extract the key information that you will need. So, your boss found a piece of metal in the lab and wants you to determine what the metal is. So the only thing that's important there is we want to know what the metal is. All of this, your boss, blah, 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 giving you a story is junk. Okay. It's a, it's a distractor. It's something to uh, pull your attention away from what the question is asking. And I'm sorry to say guys, but you're going to see those a lot in your exams. Make sure you constantly remind yourself, what is the question asking me? What am, uh, what am I supposed to be doing? She is pretty sure that the metal is either lead, aluminium, or silver. Okay, so we have a choice of three here. The lab bench has a balance and a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder with 50 milliliters of water in it. So, we have a cylinder here with 50 mils of water. You decide to weigh the metal and find that it has a mass of 20.25 grams. Okay, that is important. That's very important. So, the mass 
is 20.25 grams. After dropping the piece of metal into the graduated cylinder containing water, you observe that the volume increased to 57.5 mil. Okay, that's interesting. So, after dropping our little piece of metal, we notice that the volume increased to 57.5 mils. Identify the metal. Now, in your textbook, you weren't provided the densities. However, in an exam situation, you would be. There is no, uh, it is not necessary for you to have memorized the density values. Okay, so the first thing is, where do we start? What, what do we do? So we notice here that we're given density, density, density. So that should start to ring little alarm bells saying, okay, we need to look at density. So density is equal to mass over volume. Also remembering too, the density of water is one. So, so where do we start here? What do we do? So the first thing is we need to remind ourselves, okay, what is the question asking? So the question is asking to identify if the metal is lead, aluminium, or silver. Now, the only way that we can do that is by getting the density. So density of our unknown is equal to mass. So we've given the mass, so we know the mass is 20.25. But how do we know the volume? The trick was when we dropped it into water. Now you will cover Archimedes principle in uh, the physics section later on in the semester, but when we submerged that block of, um, of metal, so when it went completely under water, what it did was it pushed the water up that was equal to the volume of that metal. So the total volume that that metal had was the amount that the water was pushed up. So we knew that the volume of water that was moved up or displaced was 7.5 milliliters. So the density of our unknown metal is equal to 20.25 grams divided by 7.5 milliliters. So we punch that into our calculator and we are given the density is equal to 2.7 grams per mil. Now we look through our choices, 11.34, no, 2.7, bingo, there we have. So that means our unknown metal is aluminium. And it's as easy as that, guys. You can have this massively large question that's giving you all of this information and trying to tell you this massive backstory. It doesn't necessarily mean that the question is overly difficult. It just requires you to go digging for the information. Okay, that's it for video two, module one. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for viewing. Um, if you do have any questions, queries, or any issues at all, please feel free to email me at b.grant at griffith.edu.au. Uh, also, if you could complete the survey down below, I've included a link there. That'd be fantastic, as um, that will further help me to improve these videos and make sure that you guys take as much away from them as you can. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, if you did uh, find any of these topics difficult or you think you would need a little bit more help, I will be running an online Q&A and that can be advised and you'll see it on your QIBT portal. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.